If you've ever wondered, how do I prepare my new brass to get the best performance I can, this video is for you. Today we're going to compare seven different methods of preparing our new brass, show you the seating force differences, the velocity statistics, differences in group sizes, even the pressure values that each one of these methods generated simply by changing the way we prepared our new brass. If you've ever opened a box of new brass, the sight of ding case necks probably isn't anything new. Historically, I've just ran an expander mandrel that's two thousandths under the projectile diameter, through the necks, chamfered and deburred, and we're off to the races. And if you're happy with that, or whatever you might be doing, I'm not here to tell you to change. But today, I really wanted to go into great detail to see if we could reliably figure out if any of these methods are better or worse than each other, and if so, by how much. In a previous video, I covered all the seating force data that we generated for these with our amp press. And if you're interested in going into more detail than we go over today, that will be in the description box below if you'd like to check it out, and I'll probably also link it at the end of the video. During today's test, we'll be fire forming this brand new Lapua 6.5 Creedmoor large rifle primer brass for some upcoming testing. For our projectile, we'll be using the 142 grain Sierra Match King. I haven't used these a ton, but the little bit of testing I did certainly indicated that good groups were possible, and I'm looking forward to seeing what we can come up with. Our powder will be our crowd favorite Hodgkin H4350. The charge weight I'm selecting is 41.3 grains of the H4350 because that's one of my favorite loads for the 140 grain ELDM. We always prefer to have published load data to work from and today will be no different. Sierra's own load data for the 142 grain Sierra Match King is going to call it a max charge weight of 43.3 grains. Knowing the results of today's test, I'm glad I didn't start any higher either. These Lapua cases have a slightly reduced case volume and our primer is different than was called out in Sierra's data. Speaking of our primer, we work with the Fed 215 Large Rifle Magnum Primers. For me, H4350 has had more consistent ignition with Magnum Primers. The cartridge overall length we'll be loading today is 2.804 inches, nothing special. The CBTO on our Short Action Customs Comparator set will be 2.092 inches. This is going to give us somewhere in the ballpark of 40 thousandths off our lands, and we'll be testing at least 10 samples of each configuration. Now, two things I want to address right from the start. First, when it comes to these force charts, we're still trying to figure out exactly all the information that these are telling us. At this point, defining what a good or bad graph is, is simply anyone's best guess at this point. We're still developing our data set. The second thing we need to cover right out of the gate is that the pressure data today is generated from a Pressure Trace 2 system. And I've not ran all of the pressure calibrations to correct for the exact pressure that we're seeing. I did run some factory 143 grain ELDX rounds for this, and we saw pressures indicated anywhere between 47 and 50,000 PSI. Likely these pressures are slightly higher than indicated. I have not put in a correction factor for that yet, so the pressures we're going to be seeing today are probably lower than reality. None of this data should be used to decide on loading any hotter. We're only using this data to talk about the consistency of each one of these methods, not to determine what is safe in the firearm. Please don't assume that we can just crank up those charge weights because we're not at pressure yet. I still need to determine how to set up the appropriate correction factors for it, but the data will still be valid for comparative purposes. In fact, putting the velocities that we were able to achieve into quick load would indicate that we saw pressures right up against maximum case pressure. Again, start low and work up, as always. With all that out of the way, let's get into our data. Our first method is annealing our cases even before we've loaded them, and then chasing the necks with a 262 mandrel. We can see with our seating force chart that our initial force to start the projectile was somewhere in the round of 40 pounds, and overall we don't see any huge outliers in this group. But this data is meaningless without our groups and statistics. So looking at our group size, our initial 10 shot group was 1.1 MOA. I will say that the last shot was absolutely my fault and is the only flyer I'm calling today. Without that, it's 0.73 MOA. You guys can decide whatever you like. The velocity we achieved in these 10 rounds was 2792 feet per second. Our standard deviation was 8, and our extreme spread was 28. Our average pressure across the 10 rounds was 50,898 PSI. The maximum pressure we saw was 52,803, and the extreme spread of our pressure was 3,264. Our second option is no annealing, just going straight to the 262 mandrel. Looking at our seating force chart, we can see that compared to the annealed, our seating force certainly did go up slightly. However, the forces were still, compared to each other, relatively consistent. These 10 rounds went into a 0.81 MOA group. 
The average velocity was 2794 feet per second, standard deviation of 6.2 with an extreme spread of 18. The average pressure over these 10 rounds dropped to 49,964 PSI. The max pressure we saw was 52,596. Our extreme spread was 6,598 PSI. Moving on to option three for our 0.2615 mandrel, we can see that our maximum initial seating force was somewhere around 50 pounds, but the overall consistency comparatively just wasn't quite as good. Certainly at least one of these is well out of family. But when it comes to groups, these 10 rounds generated a 0.57 MOA group. The velocity was 2797 feet per second. Standard deviation was higher at 10.9 with an extreme spread of 38. Our average pressure was only slightly higher at 49,998 PSI on average. The max pressure recorded was 51,581 PSI, but the extreme spread was only 2,808 PSI. But moving on to our fourth option, our standard Forrester full length die. Looking at our seating force chart, this is the most consistent from case to case out of any of our graphs, at least in my opinion, though it has the highest initial seating force of any of the options, some going over 60 pounds. When we look at our 10 shot group, we can see that we had a 0.95 MOA group. Our average velocity crept up slightly again to 2801 feet per second. Our standard deviation was 11.3 with an extreme spread of 36. Pressures crept up slightly. Our average pressure was 50,649 PSI. The max recorded was 53,216. And the extreme spread on that set was 5,580 PSI. Option five is a larger expander mandrel. This is the 0.263 inch mandrel. And we can see that our initial seating forces dropped down, barely exceeding 40 for the most part. And the seating forces were relatively consistent. The 10 shot group that these generated was 0.87 MOA. The velocity was slightly lower at 2798 on average. Standard deviation of 9.9 .9 with an extreme spread of 30. The average pressure on these also dropped down a little bit. 50,405 PSI with our maximum case pressure at 51,986, and the extreme spread on those was 4,143 PSI. Option six is strictly going to a short action customs 287 bushing only. For this option, nothing touched the inside of the case snags. Looking at this group, we can see that our initial seating forces were relatively consistent, most right below 40 pounds for our initial seating force, but we can see as the seating process continued that there's still a reasonable amount of variation here. But what do the groups say? These 10 rounds achieved a 0.77 MOA group. Our average velocity crept up to 2806 feet per second. Standard deviation best of the day at 6.2 with an extreme spread of only 16 feet per second. Looking at our average pressure, it did creep up slightly. Our average case pressure over the 10 rounds was 50,734 PSI. The max pressure on these 10 rounds was 53,309. And the extreme spread across all 10 was 4,536 PSI. For the last option we're looking at today was that same short action customs 287 bushing, but in this time we chased it with that 0.262 inch mandrel to see if that added any consistency. Those 10 rounds went into a 0.89 MOA group. The average velocity was 2807 feet per second, standard deviation of 12.5 with an extreme spread of 45. The average pressure increased to 51,343 PSI. The max pressure we saw was 53,607 and the extreme spread on those was 5,454 PSI. After going through all the data, calling a clear winner is a little bit difficult. Our best group, funny enough, came from the mandrel that did the least amount of work to the brass, though it certainly did not have the best velocity statistics. Looking only for the best velocity stats, we'd be looking straight at the 287 bushing from Short Action Customs with no expander mandrel. This sample being followed closely by the 262 expander mandrel that I've been using for the majority of the time. Between those two groups, the short action customs bushing has the edge ever so slightly. This was a bit of a random load, but I actually loaded this identical load into some Lapua small rifle primer brass loaded with a CCI 41. Otherwise, all the components were the same and our velocity dropped by 40 feet per second. But until we get a second firing on these, we're really not gonna know all the details to compare it. It was interesting to me that the lowest extreme spread for pressure gave us the best group, but contrarily, the group that had the highest extreme spread for pressure gave us some of the best velocity statistics. Certainly we have some more things to think about. I'm certainly hoping to do some more work with my Pressure Trace 2 system, and I hope it will bring some interesting data moving forward. If you'd like to learn more about these seating force charts, check out this video here. 
If you'd like to support some of the crazy testing we do here on this channel, consider supporting us on Patreon. I hope to see you come back next week. And until then, stay safe in small groups.